Hey y'all, so sorry I couldn't be there this fourth period. Um, I'm flying out to a friend's wedding in Kansas City, and I'm sorry. I'm so, so, so sorry. But um, today, you guys are going to be doing a little pendulum lab, right? And your guys' goal is, is given a pendulum, right? Uh, what you guys are going to do is you're going to try and figure out, given its length, its mass, and its amplitude, you should, you're gonna try and create a model that will allow you to predict that pendulum's period. Okay, now I've talked a little bit about what those things are. The amplitude is how far you pull it back. The length is how long uh, this, the pendulum is from the pivot point to the center of mass of, of your mass, right? Um, the mass is the actual amount of matter in your pendulum. And then the period is how long it takes to do one full swing. Right, so we have amplitude is a thing that we can vary, length we can vary, mass we can vary, and all of the, uh, and those are the things that could affect the period. Now, we don't know which ones of those actually do affect the period yet, um, so that's going to be the first thing that we'll talk about. So I have this little demonstration set up here, and right now I have two pendulums that are the same mass, right, the same length, and I'm going to pull them back the same amplitude. And what we expect is that they should... have the same period, which you can see there. So they swing back and forth at the same rate, right? Each one doing a full back and forth swing at the same time. Now let's try and vary one of those things and see the effect that it has. So the first one that will vary is the mass, right? So now I have, I have more than tripled, I've actually tripled the mass comparatively them back to the same amplitude, still keeping the length the same, and that's not a good one. Let's try that again. Ready, set. Okay, that one's a little bit better. And you can see that they're still swinging in sync with one another, right? So what does that tell us? Well, does mass appear to have an effect on the period of a pendulum? No. Okay. So mass doesn't actually affect how long it takes a pendulum to swing back and forth. We can change the mass and it's still going to take the same amount of time to swing back and forth. So let's try the next one. Let's try amplitude. Right. Now if I pull them back to different lengths, and let them go. You can see that they're swinging differently, right? They have different speeds. One swinging farther, one swinging shorter. But the amount of time it takes them to swing back and forth one time is still in sync, right? They're still swinging with the same period, even though this one's moving faster, which is kind of cool. And that's something that we notice, is unless you go up to really high amplitudes, really big amplitudes, amplitude doesn't actually have an effect on the period of a pendulum. Okay, so amplitude, how far we pull back doesn't affect how long it takes to swing. The mass doesn't affect how long it takes to swing. Let's see what effect the length has. So if I shorten this one significantly, and now pull them back to the same amplitude, you can see right off the bat the, the effect that length has, right? The shorter one is swinging significantly faster than the longer one. And so you'll see they're totally out of sync, right? Their periods are very different. So we find that length affects the period of a pendulum, right? Whereas mass and amplitude have no effect. So what you guys are actually going to be doing today is you guys are going to be creating a model. You'll be collecting data using these pendulums here in the corner, right? That you can adjust the length on, right? Using these little tabs. You're going to be using those, um, some stopwatches, uh, some meter sticks, all to try and create a model of how length affects the period of a pendulum. Now, um, when we get back on Wednesday, when I have you guys next on Wednesday, we're actually going to test your models. And the end goal of this class is that you guys are going to have a model, so like a graphical relationship between length and period, it should look something like this. Right. 
right? You should get a graph that looks like that, right? Looking at how the length affects the period and using your graph, right? Using your graph and every student needs to leave this class with a graph, right? So within your group, you're all going to work together and each one of you is going to have a graph. And you're going to use that graph, that model, right, to make a prediction, right? In class on Tuesday, we're going to swing a pendulum that has a length of 3.25 meters. It's 325 centimeters, right? That's 325 centimeters. So you're going to use your model to make a prediction, right? If your prediction ends up being correct, you do good. If your prediction is incorrect, well, then we're going to have to talk about some things, right? We'll have to refine your model, right? So the goal for you guys today is to create a model. Um, work well together, do good work, um, kind of follow the instructions, and make sure you clean up after yourselves. Have a good weekend.